So the last thing that we did was we uh, we ran that uh, plugins command that was basically a long string of doing Cordova plugin add and we can do them individually or we can do them all at once. That was my handout there which had them all at once. <coughs> to confirm that that worked if you would like to check this is optional but you could do Cordova plugin list and that will just show you a list of the installed plugins. Now here, when I did it, it was saying fetching and then install, fetching and install. When you do Cordova plugin list, then it'll confirm that you've got all of these plugins. So I've got the ability to do geolocation, I've got the ability to capture media, so that's sound and video. I've got the ability to make the project vibrate and the camera. And notice vibration is a plugin called Cordova dash plugin dash vibration. So the internal package name is in this format Cordova dash plugin dash something. And it's a version 214. It's called vibration. So notice different versions and all of that. Later on, what we'll do when we're going to wrap up our app, well, we're going to make an app and it's not going to need to. Uh, capture audio. It's not going to need to uh, do, I don't know, file transfers. It's not going to need some of these things. So later on, you don't have to do it now, but later on we'll do Cordova plugin remove and then the name of the plugin. So again, don't do this, but we could do Cordova dash plugin dash media later. Because when someone wants to download our app, it's going to say this app would like these permissions and it'll say 20 permissions. And people will say, why does this phone, why does this calculator app want to make a phone call? Why does this, you know, Marvel Comics app want to record audio? Is it going to spy on me? So right now we've asked for all the permissions because we may want to very easily be able to capture audio. But for eventually for our project, we don't need one of these permissions and notice how easy it is to remove it. Cordova plugin remove the name of the plugin. Not the, not the simple name, the package name. We'll do that later. Right now we'll keep all the permissions. So what we've done here is we've, uh, we've added all the permissions, we've tweaked the config file a little bit. This has all been happening in our template file. All right, the template with today's date. So in my apps folder, all that we've been working on is this. The version of the template from Tuesday doesn't have these changes, so this is a newer, better version. Uh, we'll do a couple more things, and then when we come back on next time, we're going to start to then uh, actually build a project. We're building a foundation here, and we're going to then eventually, in the WW folder, start to, start to build this project. Uh, I want to check a couple of things here and then talk about um, other, other things like uh, icons and such. But if you manage to get this to work on a real device, um, even on a virtual device this will work, but on a real device this is what I want to do. Make sure your project is running on your virtual device. That's Cordova Run Android dash dash device. So it's running on a real device. In your web browser, um, in your web browser, open a new tab in Google Chrome specifically. If you're not there in Google Chrome, open a web browser, a new tab, press F12 to open the uh, developer's console. On the right side, you will see this menu here, two dots, um, two of them. It's the one in the row where it says Elements, Console, etc. This is Customize and Control Dev Tools, the, two dot, the three dots. You've probably seen... Um, let me see if I can show over here really fast, a little off-topic, but this is fun. Let me see if I can show it in Firefox. Yeah, right here. Uh, you've probably seen apps that have a menu like this of three lines and maybe of three dots. Do you know the fun name that these things have? 
the hamburger or the sandwich menu. This is the hamburger menu. Because look, it's two buns and the meat in the middle. It's the hamburger menu. Now, does anyone know what the three dots is called? It, it's the kebab menu. Like it's, it's meats in a kebab. So the hamburger menu, the kebab menu, unofficial names. Uh, so some developers had fun there. So here then, click your kebab menu. In, uh, in Chrome, click the menu, the, the kebab menu right there. And then you'll see more tools. And you'll see under more tools, remote devices. With Chrome, we will be able to actually inspect a device, an Android device. So click remote devices. You'll get a little panel at the bottom. I, I have to kind of pull mine up a little bit. And then it says, uh, remote targets, um, my device is connected. It's going to show it by the internal name of XT1528. It might not actually call it your Samsung Galaxy S4 or whatever. It'll have some, some name. And if I click on that, it, uh, it has a device. It has my Moto connected. Here's my project. The, w the index file in the www folder in this Hello World project. And on the right side, oh, and then over here it says com.smith.template. So it should have my, your package ID as well. And then you can click Inspect. Some devices, it won't work, unfortunately. If you've got an older device, this it's not going to show up here. Um, on mine, I, I see there my, my template file. I click Inspect. This will open up a new window. And then what I see here, that's what's running currently on my device. And I have there then the, the console. So I will still be able to see the JavaScript console I'll still be able to write JavaScript commands and see them in the console if my device is compatible. If yours is not working, it might not be compatible. We'll check during the break and such. But this developer's mode is going to be very useful because here we also eventually will be able to do breakpoints and all of that fun stuff if you really want to uh, you know, test your, your code properly with breakpoints debugging it and all that stuff. But for the moment, um, I'm just showing, and I'll remind us of course as time goes on, inside the Chrome Developer Tools, inside the Kebab menu, more tools, remote devices. I can then inspect my currently running app. This will also work, should also work, if you're running from a virtual device. If you're doing Cordova Emulate Android, it should also show up here. Chrome can also help you debug on a virtual device. And of course, if you've done Cordova Run Browser, well, obviously, you're in the browser, so the console here will, will work directly. Yes? The, well, um, breakpoints regarding debugging, uh, which are in this sources screen, you can have your code pause at that point. You break at that point. You pause your code to check that the code is running properly. Breakpoints, when we talked about it last month, however, I guess it's the same word. Uh, that one was, yes, when we were resizing the browser so that it would break at different points to resize properly per screen. Um, so this, uh, we're pulling up the the uh, the console. I'm going to close that. I'll also show you here. Uh, I noticed for a lot of people on their own computers, this was a very confusing thing. Let me show you here for something to think about uh, when. When you're setting this up on your own computer, you, you needed to install Android Studio because that has 
the, the SDK, the, the source code, for it to be able to compile, compile our Cordova project and run it on an Android device. Even if I'm, if I'm on a Mac and I want to target an Android device, I need the Android Studio. I think we figured that out for pretty much everyone. But the problem was that when we were installing this, it said, where would you like to, there was a screen that you probably zoomed by that said, where would you like to install the Android Studio and where would you like to install the SDK? I would have left those on defaults, but looking at them, it seems that's causing us a little bit of trouble. Because when I installed them, the Android Studio, on these computers, I chose to install the SDK right on the C drive into an Android folder. And so if, if you put it elsewhere, you have to find where it went elsewhere. One way to fix that is to run the installer for Android Studio again, and then when you get to that screen, choose your C drive. So you can find your Android SDK very easily. When I was looking at a few people's own computers, it seems like it put it inside of your user folder, inside of the app roaming folder, or someplace that's hidden, actually. So I think it'll be easier for most of you if you, if you keep having that trouble that says, where is your Android home? Reinstall Android Studio and pause on the screen where it says, where would you like to install Android Studio and the SDK? Put the SDK very easily just on the C drive in an Android folder, SDK. So what I want us to do is uh, minimize everything and open up your computer window. Let's open up computer on, on, your com on our computers here. Open up local disk C, C as in cat, and then open the Android SDK, or the Android folder, and then the SDK folder. So if you're trying to set your path at home, this is the folder that it's trying to find. What's valuable in this folder is also inside of tools, open up tools. This is where you see the android.bat. If you double-click android.bat, batch file, that will open up this. Right? We were able to get this to this before by in the command prompt, uh, command prompt typing android. Well, that's the same as this. If I was typing android, if I double-click android.bat in my SDK folder, in the tools folder. So if you need to get back to this screen, if you need to get back to the Manage AVDs, remember this part. So this android.bat file is in the Tools folder in your SDK folder. And then in Tools menu, Manage AVDs. If you need to create virtual devices in class to work with, that's where this is at you should be able to get by with Cordova Run Browser overall, but if you need a virtual device, it's found in here. I'm going to close these. What's also in this Tools folder, if you find monitor.bat, double-click Monitor, what may happen is a, a window appears behind your window. This happens for a lot of people, like that, and you get no indication down here that that's waiting for you. So I'm waiting here, where's the monitor? And I double click it again. Where's the monitor? And I double click it again. Where's the monitor? Well, it's behind this screen that's blocking me. And then there's three instances of, of, of monitor waiting for you. So the first time you double click monitor back, move your windows out of the way, and then hopefully you'll see this. And this is basically saying thanks for using the Android SDK. Would you like to send anonymous info back to the Google mothership? Yes or no, doesn't matter. I'll say no, because that's going to use a bandwidth on 30 computers. So I'll turn that off. Proceed. Eventually what pops up is this device monitor. So this is another tool here to help us debug our, our projects. This is very similar to the Google debugger, 
but if your if your app if your device d is not compatible with the Google debugger this one should be compatible and what you're seeing on the left there's lots of panels but what you're seeing on the left is a device tab and there's my Motorola <coughs> it's currently running this project On the bottom, it's also giving feedback. Even though I'm not even touching my, my device, look at all that that's going on behind the scenes. It's checking the Wi-Fi. It's checking the battery state. It's checking in with the NSA, etc. So all of that that, you know, we don't. it doesn't look like it's doing anything, but it's doing something behind the scenes. What we've got here as well this is uh, with, the, with this tool we can also uh, take screenshots uh, later on we we need to take in part three of the class we need to take screenshots of our app Google wants us and I and Apple wants us to upload screenshots of our app for people to preview what are they going to download this screen or this device uh, this monitor app lets you do that you should hopefully see a device uh, on the left side here, and then you'll see a little camera, screen capture. If you click that, that shows a picture of my device at the moment, which is not live. If I change my screen to some other screen, I have to click refresh. And it doesn't have to, I don't have to be in my app, I can be anywhere in my device and click refresh and then it'll show me what apps I have. It'll show me my screen. And then when I've got my app running, I can save a screenshot. So later on this will be very useful. Right now not very useful to save a screenshot, but I'm showing you how to do it and we'll do it again later because this will capture a, a perfect screenshot of what what's happening on your device. If I save that, that'll save it as a high-quality ping file. So the monitor bat is another another place for us to check our output. It's a place to uh, take screenshots. It's another place to do advanced debugging. like mon memory management and all of that. So let me write some notes here. <clears throat> to use monitor, to use the Android monitor. Go to your SDK folder. So again, you need to find out where your SDK folder is at, but it might be under C backslash Android backslash SDK. Go into the Tools folder. So that's C backslash Android backslash SDK backslash Tools. Double click monitor.bat. Use the Android monitor to debug and to take screenshots. Use the Google Chrome um, debugger for your devices. Open Developer Tools, that's F12. Click the Kebab menu in the Developer Strip. All right, we've got Elements, Console, etc., the menu. More Tools, Remote Devices. Uh, 
in the lower screen, select your device at left, and then at right, click on Inspect. New screen shows your app and uh, console debugger. So as we get back into writing our code and um, making mistakes and all of that, uh, we'll be looking in these debuggers to, to see how it's working. I'm going to close the monitor for a moment. This template project on my F drive has um, exists completely in in its own folder. So that's a complete separate project. Just comparing here. The one from uh, last week was 24 and a half megabytes, and now we're at 26. So we added more to it, it's going to get bigger and bigger. Um, let's go back to the Cordova documentation. We're going to start to, to look at this, and we'll actually do it next time. Uh, but part of setting up our template to have it work for the future is uh, setting up our splash screen and icons. Uh, I want a nice icon for my project, just like if I go to my apps, all, my, all, the, all the apps have icons. I want to make my own icon. And when I start up the app, I want it to have a splash screen. Uh, some sort of screen that tells you what the name of the app is and so forth. So in the documentation here, we have a screen all about that. Um, customize icons. This section shows you how to configure an app's icons for various platforms. Documentation about splash screen images can be found on the plugin screen. There's a plugin that makes the splash screen work. We'll look at that later. Now here's a screen all about the, the icons. Um, so this is saying the basic idea is that in your config XML file, we have, an, we have a tag that is then pointing to the icon, an icon tag. And it has various attributes, source, required, where is your icon? Platform optional, width and height and density and target are optional. But the way these work are, we'll have an icon, source, in this case, res folder, iOS folder, icon.ping. And this icon is for the platform iOS. Its width and its height is 57 pixels and the density is medium DPI. That's the general syntax. If, if we don't specify an icon, we get the, the default Cordova icon. We see that when I look in my apps, I see the little Cordova cube, cube mascot thing. And as I scroll down, okay, well, um, I can do this uh, single icon for all platforms. I can specify an icon for every platform, a certain icon for iOS, a certain icon for Android, etc. Or I can specify them one icon for all platforms, simply icon and then a source path. For each platform you can also define pixel perfect icons. And these are the details here. If I want to target Android, I would need to make these different size icons. Low DPI, medium high, extra high, 
extra, extra high, extra, extra, extra high. That does not mean triple X, something else. This is extra, extra, extra high. And so here, it means that we need an icon that is a square of 192 pixels. Well, what it doesn't fully explain is, okay, uh, where do I put my icons? It kind of tells you obtusely. You need a folder called res in your project with then a subfolder called Android and then your icons with whatever name specifying it. So this is something we're gonna plan and then we're gonna do it next time. In our template folder we need a res folder resources. So in my template folder let's make a new folder called res. It can be called anything really, but we'll follow the documentation. Res. And we can decide to either have icons set up for each individual platform, or perhaps the easy way to start off with is one icon for all platforms. That would be consistent. If we then wanted to make only Android icons inside of the res folder, I would make an Android folder if I find down over here for iOS. Well, I would need the same sort of thing. I would need in my res folder a folder for iOS and then the appropriate icon. If I wanted to make icons for Blackberry, I would need a res folder, a BB10 folder, and then the name of your icon. We're going to do it the easy way with uh, with just one universal icon. We'll try that out first. So in our emulator, should we not have this res folder and icons that are displayed when the emulator runs? We, it's no harm to keep it. I, I'm just, I, I would expect to see a res folder within our app on the desktop. No, we we need to create it ourselves. So um, that's that's the part that's a bit confusing in the documentation. We need to create the res folder in order for for us to specify our own icons. The the way it then actually works, it's then a line of code in the config file, which is right over here. So. I'm going to copy that line of code. Icon source equals path. So let's copy that line and we'll put it into our config file. This is going to be universal for all apps. So someone suggests to me what line number should I paste that into? It's going to be universal. Twenty-one above Android. If we put this line in the Android platform section, this will only apply to Android devices. We want to put it outside of a platform so that this applies to all devices. So this is saying, in your res folder, which we just created, we will find an icon.ping. We don't have an icon.ping. We're going to borrow an icon that is there and change it a little just to see how it works. Then next time we will have a lesson on designing real icons. We'll have a little Photoshop lesson. If you've never used Photoshop, we're going to use it. If you have used Photoshop, we'll use it to make icons. But we need an icon in the res folder. I'm going to save the config file. We can borrow the Cordova icon, which is inside of the WW folder, inside the image folder, logo. Let's right click and copy. It's not the right size, but that's okay. That's okay. We'll copy the, the logo icon inside of the WW folder, inside of image, and we'll paste it into res right there. Now our code here is saying it should be called icon.ping. Now 
And I want to change it a little bit. Where did we get it at? In the WW folder. In the image folder. No. So in this res folder, once we've copied it, uh, let's go to right-click edit. We're going to change it just a little bit. And then we'll just change it somehow. I just did right click edit. If you double click it'll open in fireworks. We don't need fireworks. Just double just right click and then select edit. That should hopefully open up in paint. Just just tweak it a little bit and then click your save button on the top left. The point of this is that the documentation is saying in order for us to customize our icon we need that one line in the config file. That one line is pointing to a file. I copied the logo file into the res folder. Make sure you call it icon.ping because that's what our code says. And then I did a little defacement, I mean I did a little enhancement of the icon. And then I'm going to save the icon. And in order to see the result, I then want to run it. I want to go back to the command prompt, Cordova run uh, uh, Android device or Cordova emulate Android. I want to make sure my config file is saved. I want to make sure I didn't misspell anything. Save that. I want to make sure my brand new icon is saved. And then I'll go back to the command prompt and Cordova run Android device what I like to do when I'm testing I usually like to go back to the home screen first so then I know that what pops up should be the latest version I just hit the home button to go back home that's what I like to do but it shouldn't matter, but I like to go home and then do Cordova Run so that when I get the latest version, I know it's the latest version. So because we've added the uh, plugins and now we've added a new icon, it takes a little longer. If you get path not exist, well, our code here says res icon ping. And if you copied it over, it's called logo.ping. So fix the name of your file in the res folder. Or <coughs> change your code here, res slash logo.ping. So mine compiled, mine launched. I um, I uh, I go back to my my home screen. I go to where all my apps are at, and then I go find my template, and it's right there. Um, Alex, can you confirm here? Maybe you're a little bit far, but can you see a little icon there with a little smiley face? Yeah. Radhika, you can confirm. Okay, great. So there we go. So I do get the icon changed. 
if it didn't quite work for you, it, it's about changing your your path and such. But this, if it did work, great. If not, we'll we'll do lab time in a moment. But when we come back next time, we're going to uh, design a better icon. This one that we're borrowing here, I just needed one to to kind of show it off. We're going to use a real icon next time. We're going to use Photoshop next time. I'm going to put a copy of my uh, app in the folder in just a moment, but I want to do something really quick here. I want to show here a screenshot. This is my device right now. There's the My Template project with the smiley face I just drew, so it works.